My presentation is entitled Cultural Identity in the Face of Climate Crisis, the Case of Tuvalu. Given the unfavorable consequences of climate change related sea level rise, I'll be focusing on why it is important to maintain our cultural identity in the face of climate crisis. Culture is defined as a symbol that expresses meaning, including beliefs, rituals, arts, and stories that created, uh, create collective outlooks and behaviors, and from which strategies to respond to problems and devised, are devised and implemented. It has both non-materials and material aspects, and is often closely tied to places, physical spaces that are given meaning by people even as both have become increasingly transnationalized through the process of globalization. To discuss the importance of cultural identity, communalism must be at the heart of this discussion. We cannot take to value with us, but our sense of humor, our intangible way of life that label us as Tuvaluans can be practiced and lived on foreign soils. However, there must be a place where you can identify yourself. It makes no sense to say that I am from Tuvalu without making any reference to the geographical location of your roots. Thus, the logic is very simple. If we continue to protect our land from submerging, we are protecting our identity, who we are and what makes us Tuvaluans. If we lose our land to the sea, we are losing life and identity. Muna de Fale or traditional knowledge there is no Tuvaluan word for indigenous knowledge. Hence, I have published and popularized the phrase Muno de Fale, literally means word of wisdom, to mean indigenous knowledge. Living or having a fale, a house, is a symbol of validity, sacred, and renewability of peace and well being. Fale is where cultural wisdom is being taught and passed on to the next generation. It is through the fale where we are taught the significance of looking after our fenua, our land, moana, and our umanga, traditional plantation. Gaining such knowledge will give you cultural status, which determines your manhood. Our society functions under the power of aliki, chiefs, who decide what is best for our community. In Waitubu, take it for example, a man is qualified to speak in a falegao bule, a traditional meeting place, on the condition that he has or represent a Mataniu, a saving institution. This traditional concept of Mataniu directly links us to land. Land is sacred. And in the Pacific countries, land tends to have meaning to those who belong or are part of it. That are often difficult to capture in the English or other colonial languages. There are many Tuvaluan words that describe land. Fenua, Fanua, Laukele, Manafa, Potu, Nuku, and dia, the word fanua in its literal meaning is equivalent to the word placenta. Fanua is spelled slightly different from the word fenua, but with a parallel meaning. Sia Song has the following words to say. Without land, there is no life and destiny. A bond of life is forged between the land, those who work on it, land and us, we and land. land uh, this bond of life is forged by God. We live in land and land lived in us. In the Fenua, the dead are buried. When a Tuvaluan speak of land, they speak with respect to the living and the dead. Land cannot be discussed as just a mere piece of land. For us, land is life because land cannot be bought nor be sold. It's being passed on and passed down through generations. During tropical cyclone Pam in 2015, there were about 90 to 100 graveyards were unearthed. Our elders holding, hold the strong conviction that there must be a message for us. And the message is simple. Please do not dare to leave us behind. Through cultural practices reflected in our languages, we are culturally bonded to land. This land is not easily or this bond is not easily disregarded. This land is the same land in which our ancestors laid to rest, they are just resting. If we are to live, 
we must take them with us. Each Tuvaluan has their own story to tell of their Fenua, Fanua, their placenta, and their pito, umbilical cord. It is a place, a place where we long to be near to. To disconnect this relationship with our Fenua is to lose life for us. Land identifies who is a people and a community. Land, Fenua, Fanua, Vanua, etc., is where our culture, language, and com communal values are rooted. In, the, in his article, Danny Halliday argues that before exploring what makes for a successful climate change migration in the Pacific, it must first be established why the case of Pacifica migration is especially complicated. Why is it different from any other type of migration, developing country or not? The concern is mainly due to the fact that Pacific, when, or for the Pacifica to leave their land means their culture must live in memory. For indigenous people in general, relocation come with many negative effects, including a break in ties of the sense of place and identity, self-efficiency, rights to land and culture, and bridging the bonding capital that is often derived from physical places and losing access to common property resources. Communalism is the apex of Tuvaluan and any other culture. The likely loss of culture and tradition of low-lying atolls due to climate change is a grave concern. Renowned Tuvaluan academic Fewe Tipu clearly points out the importance of section two of the constitution of Tuvalu that refers to the upholding of cultural values, both present and future, depends very largely on the maintenance of Tuvaluan values, culture and traditions. Moreover, the constitution declares that the people of Tuvalu seek to maintain their traditional forms of communities, the strengths and the support of community and community discipline. Our cultures and traditions were socially constructed and formulated based on the paucity of our resources. Conceptually, this shapes the ways we live and do things. It is best illustrated in our communal living, which is the apex of our social order. Communalism is common throughout the Pacific. Upolu Lumavai alluded to this. Communal living was part of our religious belief system. Life oriented around the belief that in fishing, constructing, planting, harvesting, eating, or deciding. In Oceania, communion and relationship was the goal of life. Our social, political, economic, and religious orders are shaped around the prime ideal of communal living. This gives birth to Fakaloalo and Awa, respect and alofa, love, which orients in the center of the, our total being. Our identity as Tuvaluans is defined and shaped by our communal living. We are very conscious of our family reputation and family dignity. We shall not commit any act that humiliate and bring shame to the family. Community for us is the pinnacle of life. Sir Philoimia Delito rightly put it, Tuvalu traditional society operates mainly on communal life basis. This means that the whole pattern of lifestyle whether politically, socially, economically, or religiously oriented, is basically lived according to communal principles. A typical example that resonates with Delito's um, understanding of community is the concept of ngalue fakangamua. Ngalue fakangamua means free labor or voluntary work provided by members of the community for family groups, the church, and so forth. No other institution on the island have the power to summon the Ingaluenga Fakangamua, only the Kaingaliki, which is the chief of the island. The men, young and old, would provide materials and labor, while the women provide food from the beginning to the end of the project. Refusing to attend Ingaluenga Fakangamua voluntary labor will result in Fakafolau. They will chase you away. Go and find a place to live if you do not agree with what, with what uh, uh, has been prescribed by our culture. The spirit of community and togetherness is greatly displayed in the art of fatele, our traditional singing and dancing. All of our fateles were composed to unite and strengthen community values and shared responsibilities by keeping community intact. One of the significant elements of communalism is the fact that you are obligated to share with your tuakoi, to share unity and peace with the island setting 
that are also upheld. This system of life can be described as a free exchange of goods without the expectation of receiving something, something in return. The exchange of goods goes beyond the concept of market, the buying and selling concept. If a family gives you your neighbor, um, their neighbors a basket of fish today, tomorrow they may receive a green uh, basket of green coconut. Sharing of local resources among the people never result in poverty. That's why you don't find poverty in Tuvalu, only hardship. On a governance level, Falek Aubule, community meeting hall, is described as the access of community life. Falek Aubule, or traditional meeting hall, typically built in the center of the island next to the sea. The wealth and the security of island are deliberated in the Falek Aubule. Decisions made in the Falek Aubule are final and cannot be challenged due to its role as the supreme authority over traditional governance. Falek Aubule again is viewed as the center that houses are strictly observes our cultural values, norms, and individual responsibility. I will try to sum up. Being exposed to the effect of globalization and climate change challenge the concept of community and other associated elements of our culture that hold the community together. The gradual invading of our space by even individualism force our people to be concerned more of themselves than with the other. The unpredictability of drought and the change in weather patterns have affected the people's interest in sharing and caring for the other. As communal principles have gradually lost their values throughout the years, people have come to question the authority of Aliki. They have lost interest in serving the community, especially with the introduction of human rights, which makes them believe that they, are, they have the liberty to choose for their own individual benefit. In reality, it's a no-no. There is no such thing called individual rights. All we know is communal rights that exist and ascribed in our being and runs in our blood. Your individual rights are limited and restricted to your own house only. Thus, this understanding of communal rights has been challenged in principle, but not in practice. However, what is most important here is the aspect of non-economic loss and damage or intangible culture, which is irreplaceable and cannot be measured in economic, term, economic terms. And this is the fear that our people carry, the fear of lo losing their cultural values, our infinite and invaluable culture and identity go beyond conventional uh, terms. Culture offers cu cultural identity to a person. It identifies you as a Tuvaluan, where you belong. There is no point of surviving when you no longer have a fenua, an island, or land where all culture and traditions are rooted. Life is point, pointless when you no longer have a place to call home. Our culture is tied to our fenua, where our umbilical cords and our placentas are buried and our forefathers are sole owner and they also laid to rest. Likewise, the Galicia Galiciano Tuvalu theological statement emphasized the same feeling towards land and cultural identity. And I quote, it is in our land that we find our identity, the bond with those who have gone before us and where practice what it means, where we practice what it means for us to live with one another in a community. To lose one's cultural identity is to lose life. In conclusion, let's take Tuvalu immigrants in New Zealand, for example. The first initiative they took was to build a hall, to be the center of worship and social gathering, a place where they can sing the Tuvalu hymns and dance the Tuvalu and Fatele. Life is inco incomplete without congregating. Singing and dancing Fatele gives them a sense of home, community and togetherness. It is a moment of reflection and thinking of home, the place where their fanua and umbilical cords are buried, a place where their cultural identity animates from. That is why keeping Tuvalu above the sea is significant, and it gives people a point of reference, a geographical point of reference on the map to be called home, Tuvalu. We must have a point of reference, a place where we can point to our children and generation to come 
this is home, that is home, where our cultural identity animated. Not having a home qualifies a person to be called homeless. And it is the same logic that applies to a person without the country. You can be a refugee here in Australia, but you still have a home, a point of reference to point two. Our special bond with our land and sea cannot be dismantled. And this is what makes it difficult for us to live to Walu. Land plus community gives cultural identity. Plus God, it gives life and happiness. Thank you.